Hello, it is A Nikki B on the scene and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another beat with me. Okay, so we are talking about love and basketball. It was random. I was like, you know what? I just feel like watching something with my boot on. I will say, I don't know what I watched. I don't know what was happening. I don't know what we were supposed to gain from the main character. Hold on, let me look up her name. I'll be forgetting her name. I almost forgot how to spell basketball. Monica. Monica and Q. First off, we're just going to talk about what the heck happened in the story. Like, what, what were we supposed to be so we basically followed two little kids, a boy and a girl. They both love basketball. The girl, very tomboy. They really emphasize that in the movie. Like she's a tomboy. She don't like flowers. She don't like perfume. She don't like dresses. She don't, she don't like none of that feminine stuff. Really loves basketball. She really wants to play. And she tried to play with the little boy that we meet, which is Q, as they get older. But she meets him on the little background basketball court they had going on. She tries to play with them. He's like, you a girl. You know how they, you know how kids be like, oh, you're a girl, you can't do that. And she's like, no, I can't, I'm a girl. It was like on that type of energy. And then they was playing and he got a little rough with her and it like pushed her, but then she ended up hurting herself, so she got a scar. So because of that scar is what helped us understand that she got older, we knew it was her, da, da, da. They grew up, went to the same high school. And keep in mind, they live next door to each other. Like, I guess you can say that this movie tried to make their lives very parallel to each other. Unless, I guess as much as they try to act different from each other, they're very much the same. Monica, she's doing good in basketball, but she's a little iffy because she be getting knocked over by these other players. And she has a little temper on her. And Q, he's really good at basketball, doing his thing. So they both have like promising, pretty much promising careers in getting into the Nationals with their talent. Now we're about at least, what, probably 20, 15, 20 minutes in and I'm just like, where's the story still? Like, I'm still trying to find the store. They get their basketball dream. They play for the national. She goes to WNBA. He goes to NBA. Cool. She plays overseas. He does what he got to do. They got that. They went to college. That was another want. And here's where it gets to like, what is going on? So the both those characters had a very on and off relationship. I really didn't understand it. It's like he either like, it's like one day he wanted to like her, another day he didn't. It's like he only liked her because she dressed in, you know, she dressed up for a little party. I guess a little spring party, spring form, whatever they had going at the high school. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, she's pretty. But it's like, she always been pretty. So it's like, why are you all of a sudden you like her when she's in a dress? Why Why is that the, the, the defining factor for you to be like, oh, I gotta pursue her, I gotta be with her. They get together, build this relationship, but then he's out here. Whenever he has a problem, it's like, well, with me, he just worries about himself. Then she's in her own zone. She don't, she don't really know what's going on. And it's like the relationship just feels very like they're bonding over their trauma because his family, his father is cheating on his mother. It got out in the family. And I guess they're going to do it. I think they was going to do a divorce. So he's dealing with that. The other girl, she has struggled. Her, her main trauma was pretty much like her mother, like not liking her being like a tomboy, wanted her to be more feminine, wanted her to pretty much go into, I guess, I don't want to say feminine work but kind of implying the idea like oh you're a beautiful girl why do basketball do something else with that there's really no other reason i could see why they would be together the whole point is this is what i'm saying with the real relationship it's like i don't understand why people was like oh i want a relationship like them like monica and um my nose itch oh my god they want a relationship like monica and q and i'm just like why would you want that because like i said literally the entire movie they were on and off and then towards the end of the movie he got engaged now the two of them meet again because they're both not playing in a national basketball so i'm just like do we really just watch you guys want something at, you know basketball your passion just in the end y'all just lose it all he told her that he is engaged right after she told him that she still has feelings for him, that she still loves him and has always loved him. And I guess when she was in Spain, she felt a little lonely or whatever. She's looking off into the sky. She loved basketball because she was so in love. She felt so lonely and she just had to go back, had to go back home. She couldn't do it no more. She couldn't do it no more. With him, he, she, she was on his mind. He broke his ACL and that's why he stopped playing basketball. So now, we're here, like a full circle moment, just like how they were as kids, playing on a basketball court together. Now she's like, well, if you win, I gotta buy you a wedding present. If I win, we basically gonna get together. That's basically pretty much what's the deal. So they end up playing like, I guess like two rounds or something like that. I don't really remember. But they end up playing and obviously they got together, but I'm just like, huh? 
So I'm just like, what did we gain from this? Because for me, I watched a lot of, like I like to call this the slice of life movies, where it's pretty much taking characters and watching them exist and go through problems and solving it. I like movies like that. A perfect example I would say would be Boys in the Hood because Boys in the Hood isn't, it's about stuff. It's about stories, you know, character stories and things and stuff like that, which is great. But when you really look at it, it's really, it, you know, we don't really follow anybody. We kind of just see everyone existing when each other we see the kids grow up we see them you know go off into life into various things you know a lot of them are pretty much a, a product of their environment you know we were still able to connect but with this love and basketball we were not able to connect at least that's how i felt like and the slice of life a lot of the characters weren't really strong some of it like the character development was a little weaker especially with monica's character it's like there's a point when she was playing basketball i guess this is when she was in college and she kept getting like bumped and then she just kept falling. And it felt like the entire movie she was falling. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe in this scene where they win the game, but I thought the scene is like, okay, the person pushed her, but she gonna like stand her ground. So that would have been a really great moment, but she falls again and she wins the game because it was a foul on the other team. So they end up getting the point. So that's how she wins. So she doesn't actually win for actually improving her skill and actually making shots. She won because she got fouled. And I'm just like, because where's the development in that? Like she literally was practicing. So she's a great basketball player. So I just really didn't understand why she kept falling the entire time. Overall, I'm saying like with this movie, it tried to be a slice of life. It tried to show, you know, us watching characters and going through their problems. And I do know and I'm in and I am aware that it is I guess loosely based off of a true story but I'm sorry girl take it to the bed and yeah their relationship is definitely not something that people should thrive for I don't think their relationship was cute in any way it was really annoying and it was really on and off like I said he was lying like literally he got mad and go talk to another girl you can't make this up because they were so on and off in the movie and then at some point they didn't see each other for a while so that i was really confused at how she felt like that she still loved him and wanted to be with him in the end i'm just like you didn't see him for like a good year or so like i'm confused you got a little bank job get your money chill out i expected more from her character i expected more from his character I just expected more from the movie. That is my thoughts about the movie Love and Basketball. I want to say this is more of like a review, but more just so like just my quick commentary on it because I'm like, like I said, I haven't watched this in a while. So when I watched it again, I was like, people actually enjoyed this. It is not like it's a terrible movie. What Will I watch it again? Most likely not. But it's not a terrible movie. It's not bad, but I just feel like if it's going to be a slice of life type of film, where we're watching characters and kind of, like I said, watching them go through problems and solve it throughout the movie, then you have to have strong characters, whether it's based off a true story or not. Yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll be back again with another one. Peace out.